जय गुरुदेव गुड मेडिटेशन वॉज गुड होपफुली एवरीबडी इज अप टू स्पीड वर यू देर लास्ट वीक इट वॉज द स्टोरी ऑफ विलासा एंड भाजपा लास्ट वीक ही स्पोक अ लिटल बिट अबाउट कंडीशनिंग लास्ट वीक एंड नाउ ही गोज डीपर इन टू कंडीशनिंग बिकॉज नाउ रामा वॉन्ट्स टू नो ऑन पेज टू हंड्रेड रामा वॉन्ट्स टू नो वॉट इज दिस मेंटल कंडीशनिंग So let's go ahead and read that. Who will begin reading? Page two hundred. Subul ji, okay. paragraph it's quite a tongue twister in itself yeah so what is conditioning this is what rama is asking and how does it cause bondage basically first sentence conviction in the reality of the body in one who has abandoned the distinction between the body and the self is known as conditioning when we were not on the spiritual path how were we living on, in the world thinking i am this body then when i came onto the spiritual path we read the scriptures then the understanding went you know deeper that oh i have a body i am not the body yes then the distinction started happening i started separating myself from the body i started separating myself from the mind i started separating myself from the intellect i started separating myself from the memory from the ego and just being it might have happened for few seconds while meditating or in the knowledge sessions in an art of silence course but those few moments made me realize oh i am not the body i am not this body mind complex i am separate from this now there are people who come onto the path who get a chance to experience this but they abandon it they are not ready to see this distinction between the self and the body okay so that is the meaning of those the one who has abandoned this distinction between the body in the self what happens to him he has full conviction that this body is real and not just this body this prakriti this nature these people these situations this thing this entire 
world of Maya is real. Such a person is convinced. Yes? That conviction itself, he is saying, is known as conditioning. Second sentence, he who believes that the infinite self is limited and therefore seeks pleasure, thus gets bound. Yeah? If you keep running after pleasure, it is because you feel that, oh, reality is here in this world, in these people's situations and things. If the mind is still running after pleasure material pleasure, yeah? then we are in bondage. That binds us. Yeah? Because Rama's question is very clear. How does conditioning bind me? Yeah? So impressions of this world of Maya are created because of my conviction in this world of Maya and now these impressions are binding me. So, he who believes that the infinite self is limited yeah, because he has no understanding that the self is infinite, is outside things, inside things, outside people, inside people. It is that in which we all are just like fish is in the ocean. When somebody does not have this understanding, he believes in the reality only of the fish and the shark around. He does not understand the truth of the ocean. Such a person gets bound by the fish and shark and the corals and the, all the beautiful flora and fauna in the water. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, that is bondage, being lost in the flora and fauna of this beautiful samsara is bondage. He who inquires, all this is indeed the self. What do I desire and what should I renounce? Who else have you heard inquiring exactly like this? Exactly a similar sentence? Janaka. Janaka. Yeah. Raja Janak also said the same thing. Yeah. What is there to grab, to grasp? What is there to reject? Everything is the same consciousness. Exactly the same thing here Vashishta is saying. And all is the self. Even that money that you are running after is the self. Even that beautiful woman or that handsome guy you are running after is the self. Even the job, the name, the fame, power, whatever the mind is seeking is all self. Is the same ocean. What is there to really go grabbing after or what is there to renounce in this world? When somebody starts contemplating like this, that person is established in the unconditioned state of liberation. Clear? That line is clear. He who knows, I am not nor is there another or let this let these be or not be and does not seek pleasure is liberated yeah. first is i am not as in i am not this body i am not this mind i am not this memory this intellect this ego which keeps saying i i i am not that also the one who does this process of meeti, meeti, meeti and goes within, that person is liberated. Or the second, 
the person who knows there is neither I nor the other. There is no Dvaitam. We are all one consciousness, one self. The one who knows that there is just Advait, he is liberated. The third, let these be or not be. Somebody in some bhava, equanimous intellect. Yeah? He is not super excited on gaining something or super depressed on losing something. Whether something is there or not there is absolutely perfect for him. He is in some bhava. Yeah? That person is liberated. And the most important, the one who does not seek pleasure is liberated. Yeah. Guruji says no. One who runs after happiness, what happens? Misery follows him. And one who does not even care for happiness. What happens to him? Huh? Can't hear. One who runs after happiness? And who, one who does not care even for happiness? He attains Parama Vairagya. No. Parama Vairagya. No, the highest form of dispassion. So he, he described four kinds of states of liberation here huh? in this one sentence. These are repeated sutras in the actual Yoga Vashishta in, in Sanskrit. Each line is a separate sutra. Here it's all put together in one paragraph. So this is like very beautiful. I am not, nor is there another. Yeah? Or let these be or let these not be. Or one who does not seek pleasure. Or that's it. Three. One, two, three. Here, these are the three states he has described to you. Such a one is established in liberation. He is neither addicted to inaction nor does he get lost in the results of action. Yeah? So, just like Lord Krishna described in the Bhagavad Gita that don't run after karma phalam. Yeah? So, somebody would say, why would I do karma at all if I don't have to bother about karma phalam? Let me just sit on the couch. Things will happen. So, he does not even get addicted to inaction. And at the same time, he is not running behind the results of action or karma bhada. Yeah? The perfect balance. He is not given, given to exaltation or to depression. Yeah? Similar to Samhava, he is not super excited or super low. He renounces the fruits of action by his mind, not by action. Now, this is very important to understand. Oh, I should not have to bother about the results. So, I will do the job anyhow. I don't care what the results are. Yeah? No. You do the action 100%. Yeah? But this running in the mind behind that result of action that I should get this from this. That running should drop. Yeah. For example, Jayashree is organizing a course yeah, in Cincinnati. So what should Jayashree do? 
You should not focus on, oh, I should get so many people, I should get so many people. No. Just focus on the action. Let's organize a course and let's all do seva together. The focus is what? Benefit of the people. Whoever's time karma it is, they will come. Correct? Yeah. But if you keep getting feverish in the mind, oh, I should get 20 people, I should get 40 people, I should get 100 people, what happens? The focus is on the result of action. It's not on the action. Yes? So, whenever the mind runs into the future, bring it to the present. Let me do my best right now. This is the only moment I have. Now, similarly, if Mitesh or Sakul is at work in office, they are not focusing on, oh, if I get this job completed like this, then my job, my boss will be happy and promote me. Then my full focus is on the future. I'm not here in the present. I'm not focusing on my action right now. So, moving away from that fruit of action to the action, doing the action 100% is the right way, the right path. Clear? It is by the rejection of the conditioning that bondage is got rid of. And the highest good gain. Yeah. Only when you completely reject conditioning. Yeah. All these little, little impressions, concepts sitting in the head is all conditioning. Yeah. Completely rejecting it. Dropping it. Letting it go. Yeah. Not letting the mind run after the result of action. But just 100% focusing on the action in the present moment. That will only get you the highest good. Conditioning is the cause of all sorrow. All dukkha is only because of my own conditioning. Not other people, not other situations or not other things. Sukhasya dukhasya na kopi data. There is no giver of Sukha or Dukha. It is all my own conditioning. So now in the next paragraph, he goes on to describe how we have collected conditioning over lifetimes. So as we read the next paragraph, you imagine yourself in that particular lifetime. Yeah? So whoever reads it, just go very slowly. Stop, pause after one, pause after two, pause after three. Yeah, so, it give us all time to imagine ourselves like that. Good? Who wants to read it?
just taking you through different lifetimes, how you could have held on to a particular conditioning from a previous lifetime. Conditioning is nothing but an impression in the consciousness. Yeah. So I have collected impressions as a little worm, as an insect, as an ant, as a deer that got shot, as a bird sitting on the tree, as fish in the ocean. Yeah. Collected, collected, collected. All these conditionings have happened. Yeah. And then probably on to a human life. Yeah, where even the most tamasic kind of lower kind of human life was also there, which left some kind of impressions. And then I moved on to the wiser kind of life. So conditionings have been happening throughout. Impressions have been collected throughout. Yes. These are all expansions of conditioning, he says. One grows into the other, into the other. It's just like a huge bag full of lots of lots of impressions in it. Yeah. This very world illusion, I'm reading the last one, tenth number. This very world illusion, which is like a river that carries in its stream the countless sorrows and suffering. This is all Maya. Yeah. It is designed by a higher power which is unmanifest. Yes. The policies and procedures of that department up there are perfect. Yes. It is there to completely put me into illusions. Yeah. I get impressions from this, I get impressions from that and then I hold on to those impressions, then I carry them with me and they affect me in the next lifetime and in the next lifetime. Yes, this is all Maya. It is actually all in a dream. Yeah. And holding on to all this is also just Maya. Slowly he will tell you how to let go of this conditioning. But before he goes on to that, first recognize, oh, I have so many impressions, I have so many different types of mental conditions. So in the next paragraph, he will talk about good conditioning and not so good conditioning. Yeah? Very sincerely think, what, what good and not so good conditionings am I carrying? You will obviously not remember the good and not so good from your animal life and insect life and fish life. Yeah. But what do we remember from this lifetime? What conditionings are we carrying from this lifetime? Yeah. They are nothing but impressions of Raga and Dvesha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can read again. Thank you. 
होमवर्क फॉर यू यू रेकग्नाइज विद इन यू वॉट इज एन अडोरेबल कंडीशनिंग एंड वॉट इज अ स्टराइल और बैरिन कंडीशनिंग लाइक यू लाइक टू डू सेवा यू लाइक टू वॉलेंटियर फॉर आर्ट ऑफ लिविंग और एनी वेर एल्स यू लाइक टू हेल्प पीपल गो आउट एंड जस्ट बी विथ समबडी हु इज सैड एंड अपलिफ्ट अनदर पर्सन ऑल दिस विल फॉल अंडर अडोरेबल कंडीशनिंग वॉट विल फॉल अंडर स्टराइल और बैरिन कंडीशनिंग Attachments to people, situations, and things. Yeah, for all the five senses, all raga and dvesha. Yes, which is only for I, I, this body. Yeah, anything that I do for the benefit of this body simply falls under barren or sterile condition. Anything that I do for the higher truth or the greater good of others. or you know moving on the spiritual path or helping others move on the spiritual path yeah that all falls under adorable condition that's your homework yeah sincerely think how much do you have a, of adorable conditioning at least 5% yeah and how much percentage what what falls under your Sterile or barren condition. Ninety-five percent, ninety-seven percent, or all ninety-nine point nine nine percent. Yeah. Okay. He has described it very beautifully. I'll read the sutra on the top. Samasattir vidha prokta. Samasattir is. He done sati. Sakti is the power of coming close. Yeah, sama sakti, attachment. Yeah, this attachment is vividha, is of two types. Vividha, prokta. It is said. Vandya, vandya, charagava. Different, different types of conditioning are there. What are they? Adorable and bad you can say good and not so good vandhya sarvatra murhana mur is a fool is a stupid person yeah so murhana the fools what do they everywhere what is seen in them the bad kind of conditioning yeah and vandhya tat vid tatva vidam nija that was that highest principle the highest truth yeah that is seen in the in the wise ones yeah so beautiful no very nicely described the conditioning which exists in the minds of those who are ignorant of self knowledge which arises from things like this body and which is conducive to repeated birth and death is barren and sterile yes if i have raga and dvesha with this body and the people attached to this body and things attached to this body and situations for this body i will be lost in the cycle of birth and death and birth and death yes and i come into the category of fools mood drop this attachment to this particular body then i rise above the moodhas and i come to the wise category the other form of conditioning which is found in adorable beings who have self knowledge arises from the realization of true wisdom and this enables one to avoid birth and death That is also conditioning, huh? 
So you don't have to get rid of all the conditioning. You have to just get rid of the negative kind of conditioning. The positive kind of conditioning uplifts you and brings you to this point where you rise above the fool's level. So a lot of people ask me this question. Oh, I'm getting very um, attached to Guruji. I'm getting very attached to knowledge. So is this attachment good? Yeah, many people ask this question. No? It is good. Yeah, You are using the soap to clean away the dirt. Yeah? Guru's knowledge is like soap. His grace is like soap. So it is good for you. It cleans away the dirt. At least you get away to get out of this cycle of birth and death. That's just the first step. So only the people who follow the path of truth can get out of the cycle of birth and death. Let's read the note. The other. Huh. Yes, Mitish. When you reach a state beyond birth and death, yeah, you think right now because we are in the body, we feel, oh, that's it, with I have that liberation that, you know, I have that choice whether I want to come into the body or not. The journey is complete. It's not complete. Only the soap is on and has cleaned away the negative. The good conditioning also will get rid, you will have to get rid of when you move beyond the physical realm of existence. I, I don't know you explaining getting like you know when, when we are on this path we get uh, we get feverish about meditation also, you know, like if we are not able to do kriya or meditation mm-hmm. then it keeps run, it keeps running in our mind, I did not do this, I did not do this, I did not do this. Which is just you have replaced the Rolls Royce with meditation. Yeah. That's correct. So, so how does this tie into this? Huh. This could easily become a concept, right? Oh, my, my, my feverishness about my meditation is good condition. No, no, no. Now, feverishness is not good. Huh. My attachment... No, my attachment. My attachment. See, you recognize that this is attachment. And he says it is good. So, it is good. But it is also a concept. That also you will have to get rid of. But get the negative ones off first. Slowly, slowly. Yes, you will have to get rid of. But again, don't make it a feverishness. Guruji also wants you there. Yeah. It's like you are not feverish about b- brushing your teeth, are you? You just follow a discipline. That's not called feverishness. It's a discipline that I have inculcated. I have a discipline of taking a shower every day, once a day, twice a day, cold water showers. It's not feverishness. Yeah? It's just a discipline. Yeah? I, feverishness is what? I cannot be without this. Oh, you don't come here. I want this. That All that big drama is all negativity again. That will fall into the sterile or barren side of conditioning. So that also you drop. It's okay. What is, is. What is not, is also is. It doesn't matter. Equanimous mind. The moment you reach that equanimous state of mind and keep doing your discipline, that raises you to the good conditioning. Okay? Later you start fighting at home. Oh, Ikhtaji said that, okay, we have to be attached to our meditation. Get out of the room. I have to sit and meditate. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) You should know when your mind is crossing the line from the good conditioning to the not so good conditioning side. He tells you, that's why he clarifies in the note below. The adorable conditioning recognizes natural limitations 
right? The eyes and ears are limited in their perception. The fool's, the fool's conditioning, that word conditioning is assumed here. The fool's conditioning is self-imposed conditioning. And he regards the infinite self to be identical with the physical self, body. Understand the difference between what is self-imposed and what really is the nature or is the law of that unmanifest. Yeah? The laws of the unmanifest are that there will be rain, there will be sunshine, there will be winter, there will be summer. The laws are that you can only see through the eyes. You cannot see through your nose. Yeah? You can only hear through your ears and there is a limitation for each. Yeah? So, a wise one recognizes these laws, respects them, yeah? is, lives in accordance with nature. A fool wants to go beyond and grasp more. Yes. He cannot see anything more than this body and the benefit of this body. Very beautifully they have distinguished how a wise man thinks and how a fool thinks. The word used in the text which is samasakti is usually translated attachment. However, attachment implies division. Yeah? Division is I and you. And duality, which is limitation of the infinite and conditioning of the unconditioned. Why is he telling you? Just so that you understand, your conditioning word is just used for our understanding. Yeah? Conditioning word is only use here to make us understand. It is more like all your ragas and dveshas, all those attachments that you have. Yeah. You read ahead, page 201. <laughs> protects the three worlds on account of the adorable condition. It is thanks to the same type of conditioning that the sun shines and the cosmic body of the Creator continues to direct this vast creation. And Lord Shiva, too, shines as a divinity on account of this type of conditioning. The gods that sustain this world and function in various ways are endowed their faculties by this adorable conditioning or self-limitation. On the other hand, under the influence of the sterile or barren conditioning, the mind falls a prey to the desire for pleasure in the deluded belief that such experience is delightful. Okay. So, you remember in the beginning of the creation, first there was just the creation of the subtle minds initial 10, 15 pages, 20 pages, you remember? Just the subtle body was created. Then the subtle body said that I want this physical form or I want to be that physical form. Yes, you remember that? Then we went through our different, different whatever journeys and wherever we have reached. So, if this one pool of consciousness can divide into material aspects. It is that subtle body only that said, I want to be the sun and I want to shine. One of the subtle bodies said, oh, I want to be the water element and I want to quench everybody's thirst. Yes, it is only that conditioning that has led to even the sun, the cosmic body of the creator, the Lord Shiva, yeah, everything, all these different devas in your body. One deva becomes an, a ear, a, one deva becomes a nose, one deva is the lips, one deva is your hands. Yeah? 
all these devas also that the 33000 devas all of these energy impulses are nothing but the good conditioning yes so he saying everything happens because of this good conditioning on this god side now on the other hand under the influence of the not so good conditioning or the sterile or barren conditioning the mind falls a prey to the desire for pleasure that subtle body which was the mind said oh i am not interested in doing any social service or seva i want money i want food i want this yes that desire for pleasure led to those that diluted belief and then that experience of thought is going to be delightful and that's how some people got lost in this world of maya and some are in the devas world some subtle bodies are in the devas world doing good yeah kena upanishad everybody remembers right yeah. so good conditioning and not so good conditioning okay you can read ahead even the functioning of the cosmic elements is due to conditioning and it is because of it that the gods in heaven the humans on earth and the demons in the nether world arise and fall like waves on the ocean even as in the ocean the big fish eat the small ones all these countless beings feed upon one another and are endlessly blown around in space on account of their conditioning and the stars in space move in their own orbits because of conditioning now rising now setting now bright now dark and set to have several spots or defects the moon continues to revolve around the earth and is not abandoned because of the conditioning polama before this mysterious creation brought into being by kunos who in response to the mental concepts of beings the universe has been conjured up in empty space merely by mental conditioning it is not a reality and in this universe craving for pleasure draws at the very vitals of all beings who are attached to the world the body etc no one can count their number any more than the number of particles of sand along the ocean beaches the creator of this universe has brought this universe into being as it were only in response to the mental conditioning of these countless beings these beings are indeed excellent drivers for the flaming fire of hell here whatever suffering is found in this world know that was beings even as the universe to rapidly towards the ocean some goes towards those who are mentally conditioned this whole creation is thus pervaded by evil however if one cuts asunder this craving for pleasure the limitation of mental conditioning yields to a great expansion mental conditioning or attachment to the finite and the perishable is burning pain to the limbs or rama but infinite expansion or devotion to the infinite is the magic cure for the burning pain that mind which is unattached to anything which is established in the peace of infinite expansion is conducive to delight He who stands rooted in self-knowledge is liberated here and now. No, in this chapter, the real significance of conditioning is brought out. Though the word used again is samasangam, which may also be translated as contact or attachment, it is identification or conditioning that is really important. Okay. Yeah. So just like I explained to you, everything is nothing but. conditioning so every subtle body said that i want to be this particular physical body and that's how that physical form came into existence it is all actually mental conditioning just like in a dream you think about something and that thought leads to you dreaming that particular sequence 
Yeah, for example, you wanted to eat ice cream all day and you just could not get ice cream all day and then you land up dreaming about having ice cream in the night. Yes, exactly like that, the subtle body just conjured up whatever it desired and that conjuring up this entire maya is that. It is unreal. This is not real. That's exactly what he's saying. It is all a mental conditioning. And the moment you wake up from this dream, the moment you drop this mental conditioning, that is liberation. That is in short what he's saying here. Even the functioning of the cosmic elements is due to conditioning. And it is because of it that the gods in heaven, the humans on earth and the demons in the nether world arise and fall like waves on the ocean. So what does he mean? Yeah, devas are just those energy impulses. Yeah, all that we have studied, Gandharva, Kinaras, Yakshas, Devas. Yeah, so that is the Devaloka if you want to understand it like that. They are nothing but the same subtle body which has dropped the physical body and moved on but still has some or the other conditioning and is lost in that particular conditioning. Yeah? You remember the conditioning of Yakshas? What does Yaksha give you? Money. Yes, money. Yeah, so their conditioning is still there of wealth. Yeah. What is the conditioning of Gandharvas? Hmm? No, Gandharvas, not Apsaras. <laughs> all talent, music, arts, yeah, all that Gandharva gives you. What does Kinnara do? Kinnara's mental conditioning? Political and social. Yeah? All your influence, name, fame. So all this is mental conditioning. So it is there in the world of the gods, the Deva Loka also. It is here on earth in the physical realm of existence where humans are there. And mental conditioning also exists in the not so good souls which we didn't study too much about and it's good. Yeah, The negative souls that can have their negative conditioning very predominant. So everything, all these lokas, all these realms of existence are there only because of this conditioning. And conditioning is nothing but raga and lesha. Yeah. Even as in the ocean, the big fish eat the small ones, all these countless beings feed upon one another and are helplessly blown around in space on account of their conditioning. So beautiful, no? I mean, he was like so creative even in his writing. And the stars in space move in their own orbits because of conditioning. Yes. How many rings a particular planet has and how, how, how it goes in its orbit and the speed at which it goes, everything is conditioning. It's so remarkable. Now rising, now setting, now bright, now dark, and said to have several spots or defects. The moon continues to revolve around the earth and is not abandoned because of conditioning. Yeah. It could have lost that momentum of going around its orbit and gone away, no? The conditioning is so strong, it stays in that particular orbit and keeps doing the same thing again and again. We also keep doing the same thing again and again. The same ragas, the same dveshas, that is why we are going in that orbit again and again. Birth, death, birth, death, birth, death. We are lost 
in this cycle. Yes? So every conditioning leads to a vicious cycle and everything is lost in this vicious cycle. So keep observing. Have you risen over those initial ragas and dveshas that you probably wrote down in your first Ashtavakra Gita chapter? Look up that notebook. Yeah. Have you moved on? Yeah. Or are you still there? Is the same conditioning there? Yeah. Check. That's your homework number two for today. Just check back your notes from Ashtavakra 1, 2, 3 when we made that whole list. Urama, behold this mysterious creation brought into being by who knows who in response to the mental concepts of being. Yeah? Means the subtle body itself imagined I want to be this. Another subtle body said I want to be that. And that's how this and that and this and that got created. Yeah? So it has been created by us. There is no one God sitting up there who has created everything. Yeah? It is the imagination of the subtle body. The universe has been conjured up in empty space merely by mental conditioning. It is not a reality. And in this universe, craving for pleasure gnaws at the very vitals of all beings who are attached to the world, the body, etc. Yes, so if you are lost in Prakriti, pleasure is the biggest obstacle for you. Yeah? Because it gnaws at you. Yeah? That is the biggest obstacle for you. No one can count their number. Yeah? The number of what? The subtle bodies yes, that have led to the physical realm of existence. But there are other realms of existence which are beyond physical. The Deva Loka and the Asur Loka is beyond physical existence. So he is saying all of them together. We do not know the number. Just like you wouldn't know the number of how many uh, grains of sand are there on the beach. The creator of this universe has brought this universe into being as it were only in response to the mental conditioning of these countless beings. These beings are indeed excellent dry fuel for the flaming fire of hell here. Whatever suffering is found in this world, know that it is only it is meant only for those beings. Why? Because there is no other giver of dukkha or suffering. It is the subtle body itself conjuring up the dream, running behind that dream, getting or losing stuff. Yeah, It's all created by me and me alone. Yeah. That is why that sorrow is only for those beings. Even as rivers flow rapidly towards the ocean, suffering flows towards those who are mentally conditioned. Yeah. Only if you are really conditioned by attachment to people, situation and things, by Raga and Vesha, then suffering follows you, not otherwise. This whole creation is thus pervaded by ignorance. However, if one cuts asunder this craving for pleasure, the limitation of mental conditioning yields to a great expansion. So, there is only one solution. Cut what? The seeking for pleasure. We spoke about seeking a yeah, few months ago. This continuous seeking in the mind. I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. I don't want this is also a seeking. Yeah. This continuous seeking in the mind has to be cut. Just be with what is. Yeah. Drop this running in the mind. That will lead to a great expansion, he says.
mental conditioning or attachment to the finite and the perishable is burning pain to the limbs. Limbs as in the whole body, not just limbs. And not just this body, the subtle body, the causal body. Yes, it's just burning pain. Yeah, because there is craving and there is wanting to achieve, wanting to get. Yes, O Rama. But infinite expansion or devotion to the infinite is the magic cure for the burning pain. Yeah, now how can this burning pain be relieved? By infinite expansion. And in the previous sentence he told you how to get this infinite expansion or great expansion. By? Who remembers? Stop seeking. Perfect. Dropping the seeking tendency of the mind. That is the only way. There is no other shortcut. If you've been still looking, there is no other shortcut. How much more are you going to run? How much more? Just be with what is. What is, is. And it's all okay. The mind which is unattached to anything which is established in the peace of infinite expansion is conducive to delight. He who stands rooted in self-knowledge is liberated here and now. There is no other shortcut, guys. So if you are still seeking, you need to observe. What am I doing? Have I got anywhere? It's been almost six months since we did the last seeking session. Here I think we went on for two, three weeks just discussing seeking. Yeah. Yeah. Now think again in these whatever six, seven months that have passed since that since that particular session, have I dropped seeking? Or am I still seeking? Is there any progress? Have I even dropped one little thing that I was seeking for? Again, dropping it in the mind. Being with what is. Yeah, that equanimous intellect, sambhava. Not dropping action and becoming inactive. But dropping the feverishness here. About what that should be and what that should not be and what I should get from it. Constant running that happens here, that is seeking. Yeah. So go back to that chapter on seeking and see. Has there been some progress? Little bit, 1% at least? Yeah. That's your homework number 3 for today. Yes. I'll let you be with this homework. Very sincerely make a list of your good conditioning and not so good conditioning. Adorable and sterile conditioning. Yeah? And really compare your Raga Duisha from Ashtavakra 1 or 2 and 3, wherever you make the list, sincerely. And also compare back to the seeking chapter. What had you written there? Yeah? Maybe you will remember, oh yes, this was one seeking which has dropped off since then. Yeah? All good? Okay, then I'll see you next week. But sincerely do this homework. Okay, Jai Gurudev.